Good morning, everyone. It's Rose Coleman coming to you live from my craft room here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I've got my big coffee today. <laughs> it's been a long week, you guys. Wow. <sighs> but I made it. It's Friday. <laughs> we all made it. Thank you for joining me if you're joining me live. I've got my Ink Sighted, my team sweatshirt on. I am super excited to share Fun Fold Friday with you today. Um, first of all, I just want to thank you for all your well wishes for my son, Andrew, who had his wisdom teeth out yesterday. So that's why I wasn't live because I drove him to his appointment because he couldn't drive, right? He had to be under anesthetics. So I drove him and he's doing really well. Yep. He's got the pain under control. He's keeping everything iced and, uh, he's doing really good. So thank you for your concern. <laughs> um, he's a big boy. He's, he's going to be just fine. All right, I am super excited to share this card with you today. Oh my gosh. We're gonna play with the Country Floral Lane again. And uh, the Country Bouquet is the stamp set, the punch. He's doing very well, Annie. Thank you for asking. Andrew's doing just fine. Um, we're gonna play with the Country Bouquet. The punch is on back order, but everything else in the suite, I checked before I went live this morning. It's all available, you guys. So grab this stamp set. There's so, so much you can do with the stamp set. Today we're going to use the stamp set. We don't, we're not going to use the punch today because I want to show you that you don't need the punch. Well, you can get it in April when it comes back in stock, right? But you can still get the stamps. You can still get the beautiful paper, the embellishments, the ribbon, all of it, right? Hello, Christine. Hello, Alexina. Hello, Marcia. Thank you all for joining. Ah, thank you so much, you guys. Hi, Janet. Wow, look at everyone popping on. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Polly. <laughs> Hello, Wanda. Thank you all for being here. Hi, Joy. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so it's Friday. Got a great weekend coming up. Um, going to get lots of stamping done. It's always a fun day when we get to stamp. Um, I'm going to be stamping this weekend and preparing for upcoming classes. And uh, I just, I got so much on my brain this morning and my brain is just like, poof, last night, I've had two late nights on top of everything with Andrew and everything else going on. I have had two late nights with our daughter, Amanda, who's in grade 12. You guys heard me talk about our daughter. She is in a musical theater class right now and they did a performance this week. Oh my God. <laughs> I bought a ticket both nights. I had to go both nights, right? I went on Thursday night and, and last night, and then I also went on Wednesday night, and it was like amazing, absolutely amazing. There's, let me tell you, there's nothing that warms my heart more than to see those kids up on the stage giving it their all, singing, dancing, doing, oh my gosh, amazing things. So that's what happened, and uh, it started, doors open at 6.30, didn't get home till 10, after 10. <laughs> <laughs> all these things. And I was up super early yesterday taking Andrew to his appointment. So I'm a little sleep deprived. Bear with me. We're going to get through this card today. I've got everything prepped. So hopefully, fingers crossed, nothing goes wrong. <laughs> and we're going to get through it. And you guys can make this card. Now there's a link. I think it's posting here on, I don't know, it shows in the top right hand corner here, but I'm not sure where it shows on your screen, but I have a new host code. So if you are it, living in Canada and you want to place an order with me, I would greatly appreciate that. A minimum $60 order between now and Sunday at midnight will get you these four cards that I've done this week, the kits in the mail. You can provide your own stamps and ink and I will send you all of the cut pieces and today's card is going to be a surprise pattern that you get. I'm going to choose one of the celebration patterns and cut this one to send to you. So I'm super excited to see what you guys make with your surprise package for this card. Um, the other three will be identical to the cards I've made this week on my videos. I went live Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, yeah, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and today. I missed Thursday, so there's four cards I've done this week. I want to share these with you. Hi, Lorraine. Thank you for joining me. Okay, I'm going to flip the camera and get started with Country Bouquet. And this card is called a Gatefold Explosion card. It, I'm inspired by Lisa, the amazing Lisa Curcio for this one, and I'm going to try my hand at her Gatefold Explosion card. Have you guys ever made an explosion card? The explosion cards are fun because they... Phew, literally explode when you open them, right? So let's get started. Here we go. I'm going to flip you around. Good morning, Kay. Thank you for being here from North Carolina. Thank you for sharing, Kay. 
Thank you for sharing, you guys, because you know what? When you share my video, it gets stamping in front of more people, and you know, that's what it's all about for me, right? That's why I go live every day, because I love to share this amazing, wonderful, wonderful hobby with you guys, and that just, it just warms my heart, and it's like the perfect way to start my day. So let's go ahead and turn this haven't seen it, but explosion cards are great, Marsha. Yeah, absolutely. I love them. Any kind of fun fold card, I'm all over it. You can see my cut pieces here. <laughs> I'm going to bring those in and show you. And we're going to raise up so you can get a better view of everything. A little bit better here. Here we go. Hi, Melanie. Thank you for joining and watching. So happy to have you all with me on this Friday morning. Okay, so for this card, you're going to need your paper trimmer. We're going to need some cardstock and some DSP, and I've got some die cuts. I've got some bling here. This is from the same suite. These are the pastel adhesive back sequence. We're going to use those today. And we're going to use my feature stamp set, which is the country bouquet. Frosty morning, Karen. Ooh, yes, chilly, chilly. Stay warm. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to move all these pieces off to the side. I'll explain them as I go. We are going to be using petal pink. So I've taken this piece of petal pink. All of this will be over on my blog. I promise, guys, I have had a crazy couple of weeks. I've missed a couple of my uh, tutorials over on my blog, but I do have them all ready to go. I just need to post them. So uh, you'll be seeing a couple of posts. If you go to my blog, rosecoleman.com, you're going to see some, a couple of posts from me today, catching up on these fun fold Fridays. Okay, so Petal pink, four and a quarter by 11. So we've got four and a quarter by 11. I have scored it from each end at two and three quarters, okay? So two and three quarters on this end and two and three quarters on that end. There is going to be a slight little gap in there. We're not gonna worry about that because it's all gonna be fine in the end. I'm gonna bring in my bone folder. Thank you, Janet. I love Fridays too. Fun fold Fridays. <laughs> Your day off and you can enjoy. Yes, well, I hope you have a fantastic day off. Okay, just reinforcing those two score lines. Then what we're going to do, the structure of this card to make the explosion, you need designer series paper. So from the Country Floral 12 by 12 DSP, I have this piece here. It measures four by 10 and three quarters, okay? So you trim off a little bit, 10 and three quarters by four inches. You're going to be able to make three of these out of a sheet of designer series paper. So now I'm going to bring in my trimmer. And I'm going to score on the long end, each of the long ends at two and five eighths of an inch. Two and five eighths. So where is two and five eighths? Well, one and a half is one and four eighths. So it's just one more longer notch past the two, or past the one and a half. Okay, so I'll scratch that, you guys, scratch that. <laughs> just remember two and five eighths however you want to find it on your trimmer. So I'm going to go to the two and a half and go one more notch. Two and five eighths. I'm going to score with my scoring tool. Don't push too, too hard with the scoring tool because you don't want to pierce or rip your cardstock. Two and five eighths from that end and two and five eighths from this end. All right, all these measurements will be on my blog. You will be able to copy this. Then I'm going to take these two pieces and I'm going to fold them in. I'm going to use my bone folder, just reinforce those creases, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do here. So we've got folded in, and you do have this bit of a gap that's supposed to be there. So then I'm going to take this. You want to put a pencil mark halfway across here. So because it's four inches, I'm just going to bring in my ruler. You can also use your grid paper to figure out where two inches is. I'm going to use my ruler, and I'm going to make a little mark at the two-inch mark right here. I'm using a pencil, I can erase it, but honestly, you're not gonna be able to see it because it's gonna be covered up. Anyway, so two inches on there and two inches on this side, okay? So you need to see that, I just made a mark there and a mark there. I also need to find the center of this little gap here. So I'm gonna bring my ruler in and I know that it is five and a half. So the half inch mark, halfway mark is two and three quarters. I'm gonna put a mark there. And the same thing on the other side, two and three quarters right there. Okay, so now the rest is easy. This with this, I mean, measuring is easy, but now the rest is really easy because I've made my marks. I'm gonna bring back my trimmer and we're going to score four 
diagonal lines from the points from the corner, from that middle to that middle and all the way around. So I'm just gonna open up my arm here. I'm gonna put these into the track. I'm lining up that, cor that line and that line right there, my pencil marks, and I'm going to score. And then I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other, I'm gonna do all four of these from the points to the points, okay? Score, and then got two more, making sure I'm lined up. And one more, from the point to the point. All right, so there we have it. Okay, done with the trimmer. Let me show you what I've got. I've got score line right there right? My little diagonals. So now we're going to grab my bone folder and I'm going to reinforce these score lines really, really well. I'm going to go forward and back. So I'll do them all, all like this. Now just be very careful you don't rip your paper. You want to make your score lines very nice and prominent without being too forceful. I think the part where you rip your paper is honestly using the trimmer. If you push too hard using your scoring blade, you will actually pierce your paper, but okay. So we're just reinforcing these forward and back. Get nice creases in here. One more like this. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up and we're gonna have it this way because I wanna be able to see my hearts in the right, right direction. So up here, you see there's a triangle, right? A big triangle. That triangle has to come forward, okay? So this is how you fold it. That one comes forward like so. And the other side also comes forward. So all of these big triangles, so you can do them one at a time just to kind of get them used to which way they're gonna go. So these two are coming forward and they're gonna overlap underneath like that. Okay, so that's one side, I've got my triangle. Let's do the other side. I've got a big triangle up here at the top fold that one forward okay and the opposite one fold it forward so they're both going to come forward like this like this so you can then take your two fingers and you can actually pinch it like this if that helps and then you see this this is what we want we want our two triangles like that with that little gap in the middle totally fine and then you can bring in your eraser and you can erase those pencil marks now if you like if they're I really don't think you're gonna see them too, too much, but if they bug you, you can just bring in your eraser and erase them. Okay, so that's the inside structure of my card. So let's bring back that card base that we just did, the petal pink, and let's go ahead and put this on here. So this is gonna go right here in the middle, okay? And you won't see, like I didn't get a good job of erasing my pencil mark, but I'm not gonna worry about it because you'll see when I glue it together, you won't, you won't see those pencil marks. Okay, so let's do one at a time. So I got my liquid glue and I'm gonna line this up in here. We've got just enough to fit it right in the card. So I'm lining up the top and the bottom and the two corner pieces. And I'm gonna use my liquid glue and I'm gonna put it right around the triangle, all three sides. You can even put some in the middle. You want this to be well glued because it's gonna be opened and closed, right? So the person who receives this card is gonna to wanna to use, open and close it many times to see that explosion effect. So I'm making sure it's all lined up and then I'm just gonna take the side flap and I'm just gonna lower it down onto the glue. There we go. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, add my glue to the triangle, trying to avoid getting glue on my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the challenge, right? Nobody wants glue on their fingers. Okay, then then close these up, hold them down till it's secure, and let's take a look. Whoa, look at that. <gasps> this is the explosion part, you guys. This, this is the fun mechanism that that's how it goes. And if you're wondering, does this fit in an envelope? Yep. It is exactly four and a quarter by five and a half. Isn't that fun? So there's lots of ways to decorate this. You can cut yourself pieces for the sides. You know, um, you can do it like a gatefold like that, or I'm going to show you a little different way. I'm just going to put this off to the side. We're going to decorate it now. We're going to do, um, let's see. Where are my pieces? Let's see. We've got, I'm using the ovals from the 
fancy, oh gosh, what are they called? The floral, I can't remember the name of these dies. They're in the mini catalog. Let me grab it. These came out in November and I bought them before Christmas and I used them a ton. And now they are very, they are in the catalog. Let's see, I'm looking under dies. Framed florets, yeah, gotta tell you the right name. Framed florets are on page 65. Okay, so if you're wondering where I'm getting these ovals, this is where they're from. They're from this set. So you can get this as a bundle, and it is $74.50. You'll get the gorgeous stamp set, the frame florets, and you'll get the, the matching um, frame floret dies. Okay, so that's where I'm getting the oval. So we're going to use that on the card today. I also have the largest square from the Stylish Shapes. Now, I did check this one, and it is on back order, or not on back order, but it is not available right now. But that's okay. You don't, <clears throat> excuse me. You don't need to have this exact die to make this card. This square is two and three quarters round, okay? So you can just cut yourself a piece of basic white, but when these come back in stock, you guys, you definitely got to add them to your wish list. So if you're wanting to join my team and become a demonstrator, you could put all of this stuff in your starter kit. And then when all when they, these come back in stock, you can get them at a discount because that is the best part of being a demonstrator, right? Okay, so what else do we need? We need a piece for the front of our card. We're gonna decorate the front. We need a piece of sweet sorbet that measures. I haven't had a chance to cut this one, so I'm gonna cut this as we as I talk to you here. So we're gonna cut our card stock four by five and a quarter. Okay, so four by five and a quarter for the card front. All right, then we're gonna need a piece of basic white. Let me grab some white. And we need a piece that measures three and three quarters by five. So it's just gonna be a layer for the front. All about the layering, right? Three and three quarters by five. And so this is going to go on here like this. So we've got our sweet sorbet with a white um, layer on the front. And we're also going to bring in a little bit more of that gorgeous paper. Here we have this balmy blue paper with the little tiny uh, white hearts. Now that one is going to measure four and three quarters by three and a half. So three and a half this way. Three and a half by four and three quarters. Okay, perfect. So that's going to go on here. So we've got three layers for the front. Love this DSP. So the back side of that one, oh, that would be pretty too, wouldn't it? I really want to bring in a little bit of blue. So we're going to use the blue this morning. <laughs> Hi, Hildenel. <laughs> okay, so let's glue all this together. Nothing stamped on the white piece. It's just going to... Um, Go on here. Actually, while I'm looking at this, I just thought of something. A, 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 a tip to save your cardstock. So I'm using an oval, right, from the frame florets. You could actually cut your oval out of this piece and no one would know because I'm going to put the blue paper on top, right? So that's a little, little time saver hack I want to share with you. If you're layering big pieces like this, take an opportunity to cut out the center. No one's going to know because now I'm putting this DSP over top, right? So... Um, word to the wise. I've already got mine cut out, so I don't need to do that. <laughs> but if I make this one again, actually your card kit that I'm going to send you when you place your order with me, that's what's going to happen. I'll cut the oval out of the, out of the white piece. So you will not be alarmed <laughs> when your card kit has an oval cut out of that white center, because you're not going to see it, right? You're not going to see it. It has red behind it or sweet sorbet, excuse me, sweet sorbet, and then the blue on top. Okay, let's bring back our explosion card. Let's close that up. This is going to go on to the card front, but of course, I only want to put glue on one side, right? Because if I put glue on both sides, well, what is the point? I mean, everything is closed shut and you're done. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to put glue over here. So I know that this is pretty much the whole entire card front. So I can actually bring my glue in and I can come in here and like, this is another little cheat, right? Like, I'm going to put my glue right around this rectangle. And I know I can go up close to the edge because this is gonna cover it up. So now I'm just gonna take this whole piece and I'm gonna come in here and lay it on top 
making sure I've got equal amounts of petal pink around all the edges. And we'll just press that in place and watch it dry. <laughs> and then we're just going to open up like that. Okay, so there we have the front. Look at that. You could just decorate the front and be done with it, but I got some more, more tips for you, so stay with me. Okay, so there's the front. How about we deal with the inside right here? We have to have somewhere to write and somewhere to, you know, embellish the inside. <laughs> Too many steps, Annie. This is a Fun Fold Friday is definitely not a beginner card for sure on Fun Fold Fridays. I like to teach you stepped up things on Fridays so that you can, if you want to, you can, you know, take it to that next level with your stamping. <laughs> okay, so let's deal with our oval. So, and I also have our, let's do all the stamping. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you, thank you. Let's do all the stamping. So I'm go, I've got my oval and I've got my square. I'm going to bring in my silicone mat because I love to have that nice background so I can see what I'm doing. So on my front part, I'm actually going to use one of my favorite tools. Let's back this up again. Again, We're going to use the Stamparatus to stamp on here. Thank you, Jen Jen. Thank you for joining me. Good to have you with me. So I love my Stamparatus. Now, if you are looking for something to put in your starter kit, let me tell you, this is something you have to have in your life. I have gone ahead, loaded up my Stamparatus with both parts of this heart, okay? The, this here. So you've got the, the hearts and you have the greenery, right? And they are perfectly matched to go together. I actually stamped a card earlier in the week. I'll show that one to you at the end of the video where I showed you, you can do this freehand with your blocks, but the best way to do it, in my opinion, is to load it up onto your um, Stamparatus and you have it ready to go. So what I've done here is I have got my stamps ready to go and I'm using, let me take my magnets off. I'm using some of the grid paper that you can buy, the smaller grid paper that fits the Stamparatus. And I've just taken a corner here and I took my pen and just marked off a little corner. So I'm gonna put that grid paper back down. That just tells me where to put my, my, my cardstock, okay? So let's grab that square. We're gonna put this on to here and I'm gonna line up the corner with the grid paper. Now make sure your grid paper is flush with the corner. You don't want that to be, um, you don't want that to move. Cindy says, always make your list. I'm missing your, your comment there. Always make your first fun fold on paper or non. Yes, that's a really good tip. Yeah, use any kind of scraps you have. If you're making a fun fold, don't use the best paper you have or the one that you're even thinking of using for your card. Like, you, you know, do it on some scrap and then you won't feel bad if you make a boo-boo, right? Okay, so we're going to do the hearts first, okay? So we've got, yes, Joy, I love my Stamparatus too. <laughs> Thank you, Gail. Thanks for your kind words. You guys are so kind. I'm going to use um, Sweet Sorbet to stamp the hearts over here. I've also put the greeting in the spot where it needs to be because you know what? When you use the Stamparatus, you, you can be ready to go. And if you want to mass produce, make a ton of cards at once, the Stamparatus is your best friend. So I'm going to lower this down onto this die cut. Press, press, press around. And then... Oh, I'm happy this happened. Only half of it stamped. So you definitely want to make sure that your magnets are not in the way. My magnet might be too close here, but I'm just going to try it again and lift up. There we go. Now it's good. This is the beauty of the Stamparatus. You see how I had first when I stamped it, it was only half. And then I, I just went back again and then I got all of it. That would not be able to happen if I did that just using a block, right? So now I can leave that in place or I can take it off if I if it's in my way, but I'm gonna leave it because I have my other one up here that is loaded with the greenery. And I'm gonna use my mint macaron. I'm just gonna take this off so I can ink it up. I'm gonna use mint macaron to ink this up and tap, tap, tap in place. I love that you can remove these arms. I think this is the best feature of the Stampin' Up! Stamparatus is the removable arms. You see how I'm taking it off and I'm actually, I can even hold it in my hand here and get it ready to go. And then I can plunk it back into its little hinge spot and lower down and just come in with even pressure all the way around. And we'll see how this looks. Yep. I'm missing the top part. Okay, I think maybe that magnet at the top is in the way. 
But let's press, press. Okay, I'm just gonna shimmy that one out of the way and lower down here and press. I think my magnet was in the way of my stamp. Let's see. Yes, there we go. Woo, look at that, you guys. So I, I lined up the hearts and then I also put the for you on there because I knew I wanted them to be the same color. And then I did mint macaron for my leaves. What do you guys think? Isn't that beautiful? Stampin' Up! does such an amazing job with these two-step stamps. And nothing is overlapped. My greenery is where it should be. And I could leave these in place and I could make multiple cards and I could change up the colors because everything is in position, right? I love it. <laughs> love, love, love my Stamparatus. So now I'm just going to move these off to the side of my desk here and I'm going to make some more cards later. Okay, let's go back to my card now. So this is going to be on the front of the card. So that's my stamping for the front. The inside of the card, I want to, so it says for you on the front. The inside, what am I going to do on the inside? So let's grab, just wanted to say, I love this, from the stamp set. And this can be a friend card. I'm going to make it a friend card. Just one, you could say, I just want to say happy Valentine's Day. I just want to say, I love that we're friends. Just want to say, I love you. I'm going to do just want to say in mint macaron. And I'm going to stamp that at the top of my oval up here. Like that. And then I'm going to bring in my, I love that we are friends. I'm going to ink that up with sweet sorbet. Stamp that right underneath. I got lots of extra ink on my block here. So I definitely don't want to rock. That is a lot of extra ink. <laughs> I love that we are friends. Now we have two steps stamping with the hearts as well. So I'm going to bring in the mint macaron. I'm going to stamp the outline. So you could leave your hearts like that, just with outline if you wanted to. But if you've got an inside stamp, oh, why not, right? So I'm inking up the hearts with my sweet sorbet, and I'm just going to hover over top of the outline and stamp the insides. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, just want to say I love that we are friends, and I deliberately left a white space here so I can sign my name. Okay, let's move on and bring in my card base and my oval, my ring. So I cut the oval. When you cut that oval from the frame florets, this is what it looks like. You get the inside oval, you get the outside oval with the stitching all the way around, you get both of it. So I ran it through once with basic white and I got a white ring that I'm going to keep for later, right? So I've got this. I'll keep this for later. And I ran it through again with sweet sorbet and I've got a, a sweet sorbet inside that I'm gonna use for later and I'll probably do some white embossing on that one. Okay, so I wanna share with you how I'm gonna put this down. So I really wanted it to be popped up. So I'm gonna flip these over. I'm gonna bring in my mini dimensionals. Now this is just a smaller package of mini dimensionals. They, they come in this big size, but I'm just using up this one. I think that probably came in a paper pumpkin pack. So the first thing I'm going to do is use my take your pick tool and I'm going to pierce the top. This, this is a gem. This tool is definitely a must have. Um, I'm going to use that to pick up my mini dimensionals and just piercing each one. And I'm going to put four of them on my frame, my oval frame. So one on each side and one on the ends. There we go. Now we'll peel off the backing and we're going to just put these inside the ovals and it fits in that I was so pleasantly surprised when I saw that this oval will fit in my explosion card I um I was watching I will I will copy the link to Lisa's video as well Lisa Curcio she is amazing and um I was watching her she has some tips on her blog posts from this is from back in 2020 I watched a blog post of hers and she was sharing some tips on how to get the triangle the, this piece cut out but I thought I'm going to try the oval and uh, I was so thrilled when I saw that it fits perfectly in here. Look at that. Fits right there. And then this one goes over top and you can make it match with the colors. And I see my pencil mark here. So let's just erase that pencil mark. Can't have that down there. All right. Let's see. 
Okay, <laughs> that's better. Okay, so there we go. Let's see if this folds up. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, we're making the card kind of like from the inside out, I guess, today. But anything goes. It's Friday, right? Okay, so now to close this card, I'm going to use a belly band. So for my belly band, I brought in this designer series paper with the bicycles. Oh my gosh, I'm so in love with this paper. So this is one big sheet of paper that has the bicycles on it and you can cut it into strips. So I cut mine up into all kinds of strips. Um, let me show you what it looks like. So the, this is one and a quarter inches. Let me tell you the measurements here. The DSP, it, the bicycle print is one and a quarter by 11 and my Sweet Sorbet paper cardstock is one and three eighths of an inch by 11 okay so just slightly bigger but this is what the paper looks like you get your bicycle strips and you can also get these strips here which would be fantastic on a card or on a scrapbook page so you can chop this up it's the pattern that has the diagonal stripes on the blue balmy blue so that's what i've done okay so we're going to glue this on so i had to trim it down to 11 because i'm not using 12 by 12 cardstock i'm using um, if you have 12 by 12 sweet sorbet, leave your bikes the same, but I don't have 12 by 12 sweet sorbet. So I'm just trimming it up to 11 and I'm going to show you a little tip of what I did to make this work as a belly band. So I'm putting the glue onto the DSP and then I'm going to put this onto my cardstock and it's going to be the exact same length. So I'm not worried about the edges. I'm just going to line that up right flush with the end. And then I'm just making sure I got a little bit of that sweet sorbet popping out. You could make your belly band thicker, but I thought this was thick enough. So I just went with the one, the one and three eighths of an inch in width. Isn't that fun? Look at that. Oh, they, those bicycles just make me so happy. Okay, so we're going to bring our card in, close it up, and then I'm going to bring this around the back. Okay, so we're going to wrap this to the front. So I'm just going to do it like this. And I'm going to take the one side and just gently wrap it around the front. You don't want to really press too, too hard and make it too tight so that the recipient has struggles to get it off, right? So I'm just doing a little gentle press here. And then I'm just going to gently roll this one over. And you see I do have a gap. That's because I'm using 11 inches of card, 11 inch cardstock and 11 inch DSP. But no worries. All you need to do is do this at the front and you're going to hide this, right? So I'm just looking for my dimensionals here. So I'm going to put four dimensionals. I'm going to put two on this side of my belly band and two on the other side. Okay. And just holding this in place while I pull off my dimensional backing. And then that beautiful square that I stamped on my Stamparatus, I'm going to bring that back and I'm just going to gently hover over my belly band here. I want to make sure that I'm putting this in the center. So I'm looking at the top and bottom, making sure I've got equal amounts of balmy blue and we're straight there. And then we can press down. So there's my belly band that will now be able to slide off the card so easy like that. And then the recipient can open it and see the message. Isn't that fun? You look, you can also put a gift card right there. Wouldn't that be fun? Just the thought I had when I saw that nice space. So close this up and the belly band. We're not done yet. One more thing I want to share with you. We're going to just cl close this up and bring in some bling. So don't forget everything in the suite coordinates, right? Isn't it fun, Alexina? Thank you so much. So we've got our um, pastel adhesive back sequence. I'm going to use my take your pick tool and I'm going to grab three of the blue ones. We're going to put a big one down here. So you get two sheets. You get the big, sh the big shape the big size and then you get the smaller size here and put another one right there and I just said big and small but of course there's measurements on here it'll tell you four millimeters and five millimeters okay if you want to be technical <laughs> so there we have it you guys it's a it's a fun fold a gate fold explosion card right <laughs> there we go and so if you use this host code this is a special for this week 
um, or if you placed an order with me this week, this is today is January 20th. So what was Monday? The, the 15th? 16th? <laughs> I am going to send you a fun, this is uh, the fold, but you are going to get, for this fold, you're going to get celebration paper. Okay, so matching cardstock DSP. I'm not going to tell you which one you're going to get. It's going to be a surprise, but let me bring back the other three cards that I'm going to send you the kits for, okay? So the first one I did on Monday was this one. So I will send you the, the granny apple green, the white, the blue strip, and some soft suede, soft suede. So saffron cardstock that you can, I'll, I'll punch out these because you don't have a punch. I'll punch out these hearts for you and I will send you some scrap. I'll punch out the green. You can stamp on your, your punched out images, right? I'm going to send that to you and the inside pieces and you can make this card. Okay, so that was Monday. Tuesday, nope, Tuesday I did this one. Tuesday I did this one. So I'm going to send you all the cut pieces. You will just need your own stamps to stamp your hearts and stamp your greeting. And I'll send you the ribbon and the die cut here. Okay, so that was Tuesday. Thursday, Wednesday, I did this card and I'll send you all of this one as well. The embossed background using that painted 3D textured embossing folder and all the card stock pieces to make these. So the order using this house code by Sunday at midnight and then you will get this one as well. But it, you'll have all the die cut pieces to do your stamping, but you'll, you're going to get a surprise for the DSP and the colors. Okay, so the little, fun little surprise for you. So let me just flip you back around. <laughs> Thank you guys so, so much. I appreciate you all and your time that you take to come and watch me live. Um, I will post this video um, to my YouTube channel. It'll also be copied over into my blog with um, the details about today's card. Today is Friday, January 20th, 2022. Three. I was going to say 2022. <laughs> and I'm so excited to bring you this fun fold card today. Uh, thank you for your questions about my son. He is doing great. Yeah, thank you, Shelly. Um, he's doing great getting healed up. And you know, he's young. He's young. He'll bounce back, right? But to think that he was going to split it up and do like two different surgeries, we were like, no, Andrew, you got to do it all at once. Just get it done. <laughs> it's done now. Wisdom teeth are out. <laughs> my sister said tell Andrew I love him even though he's not as wise anymore now because <laughs> he lost four wisdom teeth anyway I forgot to tell him that I better tell him all right have a great rest of your day everyone I wish you all a great weekend and happy stamping I'll see you again Monday morning at 9 30 Mountain Standard Time and take care everyone bye-bye